All right, so uh, Stampede did not go so great for me, but uh, Film Gold, oh my God, an amazing time. Uh, where do I even start with this One Piece movie? It is not my favorite. Nothing is beating uh, movie six, but it is easily second place. And then below that will be Strong World, which I forgot to mention last time. I have seen that movie. Uh, followed by Film Red and Stampede. While not a bad movie, it lacked plot. So that, that's my ranking of the One Piece movies I've seen so far. So Film Gold, an absolute delight. I love that we see the uh, Straw Hats going to a casino, uh, gambling. Nami is in her element. And then it transforms into a heist movie. And I love, I love, love a good heist movie. So I, I had an absolute blast with this one. They had fantastic, fantastic scenes. Um, the underlying plot of it was great. The villain, uh, Tesoro. Um, no, fan, love, I want it more from them. That's my only complaint. I loved all the villains and all the characters so much. And I just want it more. I think there is either a novel or a manga made for this movie, but I don't think it's in English. And I, I'm upset because I need it. I need to read it. Um, no, my, one, one complaint. My only complaint like gold is, I'm, I don't know how well of a conductor gold is, but I know, I'm pretty sure it is a conductor. Why didn't Nami use Zeus, lightning powers, anything um, that involves gold to transmit the electricity? That was my only complaint. Um, going into the overall vibe of the movie, you have the straw hats showing up at um, this island, the ship that is its own country recognized by the government as an independent nation where you have casinos and Tesoro is the king of this island. And he is running this casino and just wants to be an entertainer to the point that he's like, if someone wants to laugh, it will be because I'm the one entertaining them or else he will smother them in gold. His power is complete control of gold and everything there. Now we're going to start going into spoilers. So uh, obviously if you haven't seen this movie, thanks for dropping by. So when they enter the uh, island, there is gold dust raining from the sky and it slowly coats everybody. And that is Tizoro's um, collateral, I guess, in, in case um, anyone either can't pay their debt or anything like that. He can then turn them into a gold statue as the little flakes that are still on them and that are in the air everywhere. It gives him complete control of everyone. And of course, the idea of freedom comes through so well in this movie. Uh, as Luffy sees uh, the people who are working, trying to pay off their debt, trying to pay off their family's debt, and they are all essentially slaves on this ship. But they don't realize that right away. And it just starts with them um, attacking a crew that's attacking them, putting on a show to which um, the luck lady shows up and she gives them a bunch of luck. Whoever she touches, she can either increase or decrease their luck. So they're winning like crazy on the casino. Nami, in her element, just loving the fact that they have all this money, no strings attached, just starting off, and then they're winning more and more and more and more. Um, and I, oh, so good for Nami's character. Uh, what happens next? They go in like car races and Luffy's powers are used to, in, to get them back on the tracks and everything. And then they finally go to just like an odds or even dice game. And that's when their luck is reversed and they lose everything. And of course they can't pay. So uh, they try to fight their way out. It's like you're doing business with pirates. Of course we're going to fight. We choose violence. But then the gold dust comes into play and Zoro is taken uh, captive and his execution has now been scheduled to put on a show and get a lot of money from that execution televised unless they can pay off all the debt that they have by in like 24 hours and Nami runs into her old friend who has been working as Tesoro's uh, right hand woman there but she's also a cat burglar planning on robbing the casino and taking all their money. Uh, Karina the Nami's uh former friend is an absolute such a good addition. I love her so very much. Uh, they had teamed up in the past to rob one back when it was Cat Burglar Nami and the Robin Pirates only for her to betray Nami saying that she would go get their money because they've been kidnapped by the pirates who they stole from uh, only for her to leave them out to dry. She betrayed her left from behind uh, and Nami saying if you betray me this time if you betray my crew 
like, I'll kill you for that. Don't mess with me this time. And the entire time we're not 100% sure how much we can trust her. And they're going about the, the plan of the heist. So Luffy is uh, gone with Frankie to get up to the top of the clock tower to uh, cut up all the transponder snails. And they're trying, they have a copy of the key that Karina had got and made to get into the vault. And they're trying to get to the vault door, but there's these owls and it's hilarious because they, anything that they see will cause them to hoot. So they're trying to avoid the detection, but they get Brooke and Brooke is just like, oh no, they've seen me. And it does, nothing happens. And it's just like, cause you're not alive. They only recognize what's alive. It's like, well, that's insulting. <laughs> it's so good. Um, only for the reveal to be that uh, Karina had betrayed them and there, it was all a setup to get them to uh, the execution to see Zoro's death firsthand and put on a show for everyone watching. Luffy and Frankie had been put down in the gold world where everyone who can't pay their debt goes. And they're like, they, they're surrounded by riches, but they're like, give me water, I have no water. And they're just trying to get out because they know if they get to sea water, they can wash all the gold off them and uh, um, take down to Zoro. But uh, they have to get through like a big fan and get to the seawater. So they're still working their way through that and inspiring the people there, making them believe in their dreams and that they can take this down. Luffy, who has his arms like glued together with the gold, um, keeps pushing through and they like, well, if he's got this much passion, I'm betting on him and they're following him down through till they finally get to the seawater. And meanwhile, we see uh, everyone up on uh, Zoro's execution site and they're like, oh yeah, did we mention that we actually played you just like you played us? And they had, it had never been about uh, thinking they were getting to the vault. Uh, Karina had not betrayed them. Double bluff, love it. Um, and they had rerouted it. So when all the seawater came in from what Luffy was doing, Luffy was not aware of this plan. He was, wasn't even aware of the fake plan, let alone the real plan, uh, which is fantastic. And I love it. Uh, all the seawater was rerouted because they knew he'd do a spray of gold, had been rerouted to take the path of the gold. And all the seawater comes down and rains on everyone and washes away all the gold, uh, freeing the citizens of the island and freeing Zoro and getting everyone free of his control. And it's wonderful. Uh, we get little snippets of uh, Sabo and Koala and uh, Luchi and Magma Bastard, just little moments of them as well. See, that's how you do little fan service, little sneak peeks of them. It doesn't need to be a montage of every character you know and love just not to get anything from them. Just a little clip of them there is nice. Um, as the uh, Straw Hats plus Karina fight uh, Tesoro and his, uh, not pirates, but uh, workers, um, we get flashbacks of Tesoro's uh, history as he was a slave, the human market, who he fell in love with. His own father was addicted to gambling and uh, his mother an alcoholic and just a, a use of family there sold into slavery, fell in love, had her trying to buy her freedom, but just never could. And her being sold off and just wanting him to remember her and that he had brought her moments of happiness, but he couldn't let go. He couldn't accept that this has happened. And if he had had more money, then he could be happy with her. So now it's his job to get a bunch of money so he can always be free. Uh, how he had a history with uh, Doflamingo, and he's been working with the Celestial Dragons, even though he hates them for everything they've done. And he's, but he's giving them tribute so he can do whatever he wants. His backstory, it's, it's too fast. I would love, love, love to have spent more time with it. But it is extremely interesting. It's very, I'm, I'm excited. I, what I want is a access to the manga. I'm a, I think it's a manga. Um, but I don't think it's in English. I need it. Um, I absolutely love seeing, uh, who was it? Uh, Robin and uh, Sanji teaming up together. They're a couple that have not really, or a pair that's not been uh, having many fights together. So he's protecting her, but she can also take care of herself, obviously. So the one they're fighting is popping out. He can pass through inanimate objects, uh, non-living objects. So he's going through the walls and floor and shooting at them. And they're just like uh, trying to buy time and waiting for the right moment 
when Robin can use her powers to grab him because obviously she makes uh, more of her own arm so he can't pass through living material. So it's an easy beat. Uh, which Sanji and then just like, I can't let a lady get her hands dirty. I'll take care of this. Finishes him off. But my favorite, without question, is the luck luck fruit. I love this power. Uh, the lady who has it steals the luck of her own people to the point that she is now untouchable. This is an insane overpowered devil fruit. Like, she she takes a coin and flips it and it just does Final Destination kind of stuff to take down the straw hats that she's facing because she is just that lucky. It works out that well for her. Usopp makes a run for it, leaving um, Brooke and I think Chopper by themselves to uh, deal with her, but he comes back in the most incredible way because he um, he takes the bag and throws it when the coin is tossed and the coin ends up go falling into a slot machine, getting all uh, perfect nines or whatever, a bunch of money comes out, but that had used up all her luck. So he is able to finish her off. And if that is not the coolest moment ever, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, Lucci is, uh, using the ships to try to save the celestial dragons that are still on this island, who the Straw Hat crew had to dress up at as a one point in time to sneak through an area, which was wonderful. Did not see that coming. Love that. Uh, but they want to get off the island, so they're attacking to try to get to the celestial dragons well and indiscriminately attacking civilians, which is why the Revolutionary Army and Sabo start showing up as just being like, don't get involved. This is my brother's fight. And I love it. I love it. I love Sabo. I love Sabo so very much. Um, uh, at one point in time, who I think it's Tesoro says, you call this justice, speaking to Luffy as he's taking him down. It's like, no, I call this freedom. And he is fighting back with everything he has using his powers and finally gets the final hit on Tesoro. And it's it's a lot of fun. The final fight, maybe the action isn't quite as entertaining as I've had. Not much as fun, not as much fun as the rest of the movie's been. But it's still, it's still, I really, really, really like this movie. Um, I've, I've, I've been saying for a while, Nami is like, complete her faith in Luffy is on match so when she saves Karina they both end up getting taken and it's just like show me that lack of despair your hope turns despair and you crumble before me Tesoro's just waiting for her to admit that they've lost and she's just like no I trust my crew because of course because Luffy will never let her down and that's when he comes to save them and take him down and it's so I love it oh my god I love Nami in this movie this is such a good movie for Nami uh, but it ends with Karina. So we have, it has been revealed that she did not actually betray Nami. She had returned for Nami and drew the pirates away so Nami could get away. But it kind of seems like at first uh, she had betrayed Nami. And now that they're back, they're friends again, um, they want to, who knows, go off and have more adventures. Maybe she should join the Straw Hat crew, but no. Uh, they hear this ticking element and everyone's like, what's going on? And uh, Karina's just like, the ship is going to explode. He he's not going to let anyone take it. We all have to evacuate. So go, all of you. And I will stay behind. I will uh, be the one to steer the ship away from you. Get it far enough the way that you guys will survive the explosion. So they awfully get to their ships only for it to be revealed that she's just stealing the ship for herself along with all the golden treasure that's on there. And she swindled them all. And it's, ah, uh, it's like, of course she's one of Nami's friends. I love it. This, this is good. This is good. So while not my favorite um, One Piece movie, because again, nothing is topping movie six, the, the horror elements of that, Casino, Heist, a lots of fun, lots of style, and a, just a perfect movie for Nami. Usopp, great moments, focusing on uh, freedom. I, I think this is a really, really, really good One Piece movie. Highly recommend. I love, I loved it. All right. I will talk to you later.